So anytime you're dealing with inconsistent cash flow, you have the problem of paying those bills and, 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 and often um, the use of financing, a line of credit for instance, is the way that you can buffer that inconsistent cash flow. So this can become a problem because who is benefiting when you borrow money from a bank? It's always the banker. The banker has control, he dictates the terms and conditions, and he gets all the benefit using our money. Hi, I'm Liz Lamond and I'm here with my colleague George Roth and we're here to talk to you about problems that business owners face. We have four top problems that business owners face and we're going to talk about these today and we're also hang around because we're going to provide some solutions towards the end. So George, what's the one of the number one problems that uh, business owners face in their um, in the day-to-day -day management of their business? Sure. So <clears throat> when I speak to business owners and, and I and I am a previous business owner, I've, I've bought and sold businesses, so I, I can understand this. One of the biggest issues is cash flow. So the cash flow can be very inconsistent depending on the business. So anytime you're dealing with inconsistent cash flow, you have the problem of paying those bills and, 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 and often um, the use of financing a line of credit, for instance, is the way that you can buffer that inconsistent cash flow. So this can become a problem because who is benefiting when you borrow money from a bank? It's always the banker. The banker has control, he dictates the terms and conditions, and he gets all the benefit using our money. So one of the things that I would think that a business owner wants to avoid is the having to finance and use financing to to bridge the gaps between the revenue so that is a big issue and we definitely have an alternate solution for that yeah absolutely and and as you said like paying cash is fine but then that cash is gone so if there becomes another need that's in the business straight away then mm -hmm. the option to kind of use that cash is is no longer there and so then more relying more heavily on financing and that kind of um, ties into our next you know problem that business owners face is around control and flexibility so the issue with um, with you know cash flow or financing is that there's very limited flexibility in the use of that money so for example if it's being financed then generally there's a requirement for at least interest payments so there needs to be enough revenue coming in for a business owner to be able to meet those regular monthly payments to pay back on that financing and the ability to control when and how that money is used is usually subject to somebody else's rules. So if there's an opportunity that comes up to either expand the business or to buy some equipment or something changes in the needs of the business, that's not always possible for a business owner because they don't actually have the control and flexibility over the use of their money inside the business. Absolutely. So, so financing is one. The other is, you know, you, you pay cash, which you mentioned. Anytime you pay cash, that money's gone forever and can never work for you again. So one of the big differences, and often business owners understand this, but not necessarily, there's a big difference between cash and capital. So cash, once it's gone, it's gone. Capital is there to stay, to grow, and to use. So when you need to expand, when you need to make a payment on something, pay for something, the capital is there growing and you can use it as you choose. So this is part of the solution that we're talking about. So paying cash, financing from a third party, not always the best options. There is a third option. Third option is where you grow, control, and use your own pool of capital. That capital grows. Don't give it all away yet, George. <laughs> and that capital grows, and you can use it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Really good points. And we're going to get to that solution really shortly, but we have two more, two more problems that business owners face. Let's talk <coughs> about the big T word, taxes. <laughs> so uh, taxes is something that I think we're all familiar with, whether a business owner or not something we're all very aware that uh, can create a, quite a significant impact on our finances and it's something that um, is a little bit more tricky sometimes for business owners because they're actually having to put money aside 
um, to, to go towards their taxes. And then uh, if you build up actually too, money, too much money inside your corporation, then we start to run into passive income tax rules and things like that. So talk to your accountant. We're not providing accountant, uh, um, we're not providing accounting uh, input here, but it's just understanding that these are issues that you need to consider as a business owner. So, you know, what is the impact of my choices of how I'm using my cash, how I'm storing my cash? How am I going to make sure I have enough to cover my taxes? How am I going to make sure that I'm not pushing myself into another tax problem because I'm storing it in a, le in a less effective way? So there's lots to consider as a business owner with, re with regard to taxes. What else, George? Absolutely. So you mentioned the passive income rules, the new rules that came in you know, a few years ago um, can have a huge impact if you have money sitting um, in, a, in a passive investment. So anytime you have money inside your corporation that's not being used actively, uh, you can run into the tax problem. And it's not only the tax you're going to pay, but it also can affect your your business deductions, you know, the small business deduction can be impacted, which becomes very, very significant. So always tax problems, everyone has them. Businesses can manage them to a certain degree where you're deferring the tax as a business owner, as a corporation. However, the tax man always comes and uh, you want to be able to manage that as best you can and, and pay as little as you have to. So definitely a, an issue for business owners, no doubt about it. Yeah. Do you want to talk about our fourth and final problem, George, to <clears throat> lead with that? The fourth and final problem is legacy and what happens when you, the owner or the owners of the business are not here anymore. So what happens to that business? How are you going to ensure the business can continue without you. Now we're talking about your, you passing, but there's also other issues like critical illness, accident, sickness. If you, the owner, are not there, um, what impact is that going to have on the business? So you want to have a plan in place to make sure that that business can continue uh, without you. Whatever your exit strategy is, and hopefully you have one, you know, whether it goes to the next generation, whether you want to sell your shares, whatever the case may be. Um, even in retirement, what happens to the business when you retire? So uh, a lot of questions uh, that need to be answered. Hopefully you have those answers, but if not, um, we can definitely help you out with that. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. And, you know, people exit businesses for all sorts of different reasons. Sometimes it's highly profitable and it's an opportunity to sell it. And uh, what do you have, you know, do you have an effective place to store capital for yourself going forward once you've exited out of the business? Or perhaps you want to be able to buy out a business partner or have some other kind of change in your business. There's lots of different scenarios that can play out in business during your lifetime, but also considering, you know, if you're going to pass it on to family members and you know, something we come across is often a spouse doesn't necessarily want to end up running the business, you know, on your behalf. So what's what's the exit strategy there and how how can we set it up for success for everybody so that you're actually getting benefit during your lifetime as well? So some of these strategies that are talked about are yes, absolutely, we need to consider what happens if the if the worst thing happens to you, but we also want to consider what happens during your lifetime and to George's point, for your retirement. Like what what you know, solution do you have for that so that you don't necessarily have to carry on those business activities when you're ready to take pa um, passive income. So one of the one of the problem that I think business owners should think about as they enter their business, <laughs> because it's something that, you know, it's, it's eventually you're going to exit from it in some way, hopefully the most successful way where you've made a fortune and uh, you're now sitting on a beach somewhere. But uh, Certainly, there's those those problems need to be solved, and you're going to have those needs along the way. So let's talk about the solution, George. What's something that could actually address all four of those things? Like that's pretty incredible. Like, what what are we talking about today? Well, the number one solution that I know of, <clears throat> and I've been doing this for well over a decade, is uh, using your own personal financing source. So growing your capital, using it, and applying it when and how you decide so you have all the control so it's called the infinite banking concept that is the strategy the solution or the vehicle that we use to implement that strategy is participating whole life insurance and that gives us the vehicle that gives us the the methodology 
and then we are the drivers of that vehicle so what we do determines how successful we are so this is a better option than paying cash financing through a third party and it's going to solve all of those four problems that we just discussed with one solution we call it the and asset it can do all of those things and leave a legacy um, at the end of the day yeah, and I think really important to understand is that, you know, whoever you work with, make sure they are licensed in with the Nelson Nash Institute um, and understand the infinite banking strategy. Not all whole life products are created the same and we want to be able to maximise it for your business. And there's a certain way that the policy needs to be designed to be able to do that. So make sure you reach out and connect with a coach who can actually help you with that and somebody who's actually using it themselves. So George and myself, we use this in our own lives, in our own businesses. Um, so we understand the ins and outs of using that as a business owner. Um, really important as well is that um, you understand that this is not an either or. We're not going to choose to buy equipment or to um, implement this strategy. This is something that's more effective than storing money inside a traditional bank account. So it's something, is, as George says, it's an and asset. It's something you're going to do to buffer all these ups and downs of business it's going to provide you with an exit strategy should you need it and it's going to give you that control and flexibility as well as a way to have tax advantage growth and have the cash flow available when you need it for the things that you need in your business. So that's how it kind of navigates across all the four problems that we've identified for business owners today. If you would like to learn more, feel free to click on the link that appears below this video.